Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be a weekly reading vlog. I'm going to be weekly vlogging for the entire month of September. It's going to be a very chaotic month for me because I'm moving, starting a new job, and several other things are happening all in the same month. My birthday is in a couple days as well, so I thought why not immortalize all of that in share the chaos with you. Uh, this month is also one of my favorite readathons, Becca's Bogopoly. So since the 1st of September was on a Thursday, today is Saturday the 3rd, um, this video will go from Tuesday, Thursday to Wednesday, um, and then I'll start every new vlog pretty much on Thursday. So if you saw my TBR video, you know that my TBR is pretty short, so there's going to be, we're going to be some doing some rolls in this vlog probably. If not in this vlog, in the next vlog. Um, so let's talk about what I have already. So the first thing that I finished was the fall by Ryan Cahill. I did some threats with Becca on Thursday, just kick off Bogopoly, and I did some on Friday with her Patreon. Uh, and this is the first, or the point five in the Bound and the Broken series. Uh, the first book being Of Darkness and Light. And this one, we followed four different people uh, on the day that the order fell. And so we follow one person who is partially responsible for this falling. We follow one person who is part of the dragon kind, or these people who are bonded with dragons. We follow one person who is one of the members of this like immortal, inhuman, almost uh, sentinel army. And we also follow a character who is like uh, the archon or whatever that is. And I think for me personally, the there, there are two reading orders for this one. One is to read this before the series, and then one is to read this after book one. Because if this is just like straight action, it's almost like if you read like a 600 page book, and you're at page 520 and everything is ramped up and this is like the final scene, it's kind of like that. So for me personally, I think it would have been better had I read this afterwards, because then I would have more investment in like the world and the characters and the story, and I would have a better understanding of what's happening. So. Uh, for me, I think this wasn't the best place to start, but I do plan on continuing off the series, so maybe um, I'll read that sometime this month. Uh, last night, when I was doing more to Rebecca, I started Vampire Dormitory. This is the first volume in this manga series about this boy who's an otaku and also a vampire, and he convinces this, this like homeless boy to be his thrall so that he can feed from him until he finds his soulmate because only like women can be the soulmates and because human blood like if you haven't been loved tastes bitter basically but our mate the boy is actually a girl but because she's only on the street she's going to be a boy so she won't have as much trouble and so it just follows them so this was really cute i definitely say like it says for older teens 16 plus but it definitely seemed pretty young and amateur for me but i guess because like, he's sucking her blood maybe that's why you know it's for an older audience uh i don't know if i would be continuing on with this because I, I didn't love it i might like try and read the second volume visually but this didn't really pull me in sadly and then uh last night i started a prelude to ashes by tiago Abdala. this is the prelude to a touch of light uh, this, I am 39 pages into it, so about 25%, but so this is only 144 pages. This is my dice roll roulette book, uh, and so far, I don't know that I'm a fan of this writing style. It's very, like, sparse and very empty. Like, I, I don't feel like I, granted, it's a prequel, granted, I'm in the first 40 pages, but even still, like, I don't feel like the world is being very well described or that they were getting like a lot of information really. Uh, so it's not really doing the most for me, but I'm gonna give it a, you know, I'm gonna give it a, my best shot. I'm gonna uh, read the entirety of this thing. And so this one, it's also like the, the boy is kind of pitiful. So this is like almost like a Romeo and Juliet type of situation because they're from these rival clans and um they have they have this forbidden love and like they're just war breaking out and they're trying to be together and they're trying to solve like, the problems that their nations are facing because they're the fruits and princess of these respective places and for for them to be together they have to resolve the conflict but it seems that they may have been a betrayal somewhere yeah 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 but so far not loving this but i am going to continue to give it up my best effort so if you're gonna read some more of this i may 
get out of the house today because I've done some filming. I did my makeup. I haven't left the house in a couple days. It's a nice day outside. Um, you know, why not? So, that's all I have right now. I think the next thing I'll read after that is, like, going to be Anyeka and, like, having your sons in middle grade. Uh, so, yeah. That's all I have right now. And let's get to it, shall we? Hello, friends. Happy Friday. Um, today has been a rough day so far. It's, like, 11.30. Had therapy this morning. Lots of tears were shed. It's a very rough time in my life right now but i just ordered lunch which is good because i haven't been eating the way i should and by that i mean i've just like not been eating at all and i got two packages both from amazon like one has my name my like full name on it and then one has like just my first name and the one that's just my first name i know is on my wish list because i changed it so that i would know so that I wouldn't open them because I know my birthday's coming up. People have sent me some things for my birthday so that I can actually just wait. But the other one has my full name. So I'm like, I don't think I've ordered anything. I don't think I've had any pre-orders. So I figured I'd open that here with you all. So you can see what it is. Oh, I think I know this. <laughs> I was right. So this is Nomads of the Sea by Corey Zucker. This is an indie fantasy book and I was talking on Twitter with Cassidy because I saw a review someone said that this is like Rage of Giants meets the Farsi trilogy and I was like listen those two things two of my favorite things like comparing those is really intriguing to me. I'm so I think it's the top of my to buy list. I guess the I think the author maybe follows Cassidy and they saw the tweet he was like if you want a copy I'll send it to you for a review and so he did um and it just says enjoy from kobe and this is a thick girl this is uh let's see 682 pages he's 24 who lives in he lives in canada this is his first novel i can't recall if cassidy said in her video that he like doesn't plan on continuing on with the series or something like that but let's let me read you the synopsis in the Nisi Archipelago, 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 that word always messes me up. A civil war festers. Zealous insurgents burn and pillage villages across the islands in an effort to return the Mangal people to the sea and to free themselves of their listened overlords. Sig of the Middendal, the son of a diplomat, must combat the growing threat. As he stamps down the rebellion, he quickly finds his talent for bloodshed surpassing his talent for peace. Adalia Goss is attached to the license company that has been sent to aid the loyalists. The daughter of a renowned physician and arcane scholar, her task is to learn more about the Mangal mages who far outstrip the mainland sorcerers. Her efforts are hindered by the dark reputation of her predecessors. Back on Lissa, Bran Irian, the inferno of mocking past, has lost his spark. Once as the foremost mage of the royal army, he slew indiscriminately in the name of his queen. Now he finds himself enfeebled and on the run. Witness the beginning of the storied band of soldiers who came to be known as the Fish Gut Guard. I absolutely love this cover. It is very pretty. Some <laughs> the reviewer said that this is gonna be like a romance or something. And I was like, only somebody who doesn't read romance would look at this and be like, this is a romance. Um, but it's very thick. And like I I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. So I may be reading this very soon. Oh, depending on how things go, because I did finish my current read last night. So that's exciting. But I'm gonna go eat lunch and I'll talk to y'all a little bit later. I started a couple different books and I'm about 50% of the way through my Bookopoly TV alert. So I thought now would be a good time to just do another roll and see if I can make what I want to read fit with what I get. So let's go. Eight. One, two, three. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Jesus Christ. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pattern and text. Pattern and text.
Okay, gonna gonna do another one. Six, and we've got a double. One, two, three, four, five, six. Published set since 2020. Okay. And let's since we got a double, let's do one more. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so that one is emoji. So random emoji generator. Okay, so here we are, random emoji generator. Cool, sunglasses, okay. Sunglasses, cool, summer, bright. I'm gonna go with bright, okay? Cause bright is gonna get me the book I want. So I'm gonna go with fool's errand because the fool is bright and white and golden color like that's how he's described so i'm gonna read this and then i'll pick 2020 read or publish since 2020 and pattern and text later <laughs> friends we are long overdue for an update so today is wednesday the 7th yesterday was my birthday um wasn't the best day but we're here so last we spoke i <laughs> did three extra rolls to get the one because i wanted to be reading on my tbr granted i did get it over but um the one that i chose i think was like the sunglass emoji so i chose to read fool's errand for that one so Fool's Errand is the first book in the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb, which is the seventh book in the overall realm of the Elderlings. So that series starts with the Farseer trilogy, which starts as Assassin's Apprentice, which is like my favorite series, like one of my favorite series that I read in 2020. Uh, it's been two years since I read Robin Hobb, but recently my book club, the b book club, was or is doing a read-along of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. So that was that was what we were doing, and I like marathon that, um, and then I went straight in from Live Ship into Tawny Man. So Tawny Man, let's talk about it. So I've already finished this book. I stayed up to like 3 in the morning on Tuesday to finish it. And I wanted to update you, but like I said, I'm not having the best time. My mental health is in the gutter. Uh, and of course, when I'm already sad and depressed myself, you know what I do? I marathon the sad shows that I watch, like Grey's Anatomy. I'm now fully caught up on season 18. And I read sad books like Robin Hood to just like get deep in there. Um, but, you know, that's, that's just where we are. So anyway, this book picks up 15 years after the end of the events of the Farseer trilogy. Now, in between the Farseer trilogy and the and this is obviously the Live Ship Traders trilogy. And Live Ships takes place about two years before the events of this. Uh, so uh, the start of that is probably like three to four years before the events of here. So 10 years go by in world between Farseer and Live Ship and then about two years go by the course of that series and then two years since then. And what I will say is um, re having read Live Ships recently, there's a lot of overlap and a lot of, especially more so when we get to the next book, but there's a lot of overlap and there's a lot of mentions to the things that happen in here. And all three of these series have a similar character. And this character, I won't name them here, but this character is a character that inspired, is one of the things that inspired Hoyd from the Cosmere. So if you're familiar with Hoyt, he's like the one character that's in all the series that is inspired by a character in this world. Um, and in each trilogy, they've gone by a different name. But if you know, you know who it is. So this one 
it starts out slow and just like reacquainting you with the events and the things that have gone on since the end of the Farsia trilogy. Like what Fitz's life has been like, what this quiet time in both the country of the Six Duchies and in his personal life, what it's been like. And it starts essentially almost with like a catalyst type of event and he is being pulled in a different direction his old life is coming back to pull him in once again because in that original trilogy because he was a son he was a bastard but he was the son of a prince he was in a unique situation to do certain things and that unique situation is still the case but he also has a specific set of skills <laughs> um and information that very few people have and he has and to be to be quite honest with you, he can be easily manipulated and easily forced into this unflinching loyalty to the Farseers and to the kingdom of the six duchies. And I think honestly, I don't like it. I don't like how they use and abuse him. I don't like that to him to them he is not even second, but he comes last in his own life and he is set up to be this epic sacrifice. And I'm just like, at what point is it enough? I feel like he's sacrificed enough. He's done enough. And you would think, oh, oh, you know, all the things that he did in the first trilogy would mean that for life y'all can leave him alone. But that is really not the case. Um, this series, this first book in this series, we, we experience something that is, is hinted at quite early on. Because eight people age time passes by your body changes what you're able to do changes and that's something that is talked about quite a bit in here and that is even more so true for the the non-humans in the story and we explore the different the different magics and the different feelings also prior to starting this i read the Pi willful princess and the piebald prince which is referenced quite a bit in here and while they may have come out after, I think it was recommended that you read it before, and I do hold with that. So, overall, I enjoyed this. I gave it 3.5 stars. It wasn't my favorite. I think, and it's not, it's not my favorite because I'm, not, I'm kind of fed up for Fitz. I'm just tired of him having to sacrifice himself for these people who don't have his best interest at heart and who will use him and maneuver him like a tool, like a possession with no regard for him, his well-being, or his happiness. And I don't like it. So since then, I finished that, like I said, three o'clock yesterday morning. And since yesterday morning, it is it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So in the last 24 hours of celebrating my birth, let's say, um, and yesterday and today's reading, I am now 375 pages into the Golden Fool. This is a birthday gift from Steph, from Stephanie Bookish. So thank you so much, Steph. Um, and this one just picks up immediately where Fool's Aaron left off. And I'm reading this one and I'm just getting more and more angry. Like Ketchikan and Che, I think they can choke. I, I feel like if you know what Fitz has given up, if you know what he's sacrificed, if you know the pain and suffering this family have caused him and these people and how they've even warped his own thinking to that his life does not belong to him. For people who don't want him. People who don't want him, who don't respect him, who don't value him, um, and, and him having to make all these sacrifices and changes. Like, he literally drops everything and fools Aaron. He, uh, uh, like, he uproots his entire life because they came calling. And it wasn't enough that, oh, you do us this one favor. It's like, well, that was the entry point into you giving us your whole life again and doing everything that we have. And the few things that you hold dear, if you're unwilling to do what we want you to do, we'll take those from you as well. You're not safe. Like, there's something that happens in Assassin's Quest. Two things, specifically, where he was used a lot and in a way that makes me very uncomfortable and in a way that I think is very, uh, like, a, is very violent. And, and we, we thought that a compromise had been made and put to rest there because he gave up one sacrifice for a different violent sacrifice. And it's coming back to bite, like, oh... 
we, we know we made that agreement, but we're gonna renege on that agreement now because the needs of the far seer line and the needs of the kingdom are more important than your needs as a person. They're more important than promises that we made to you. The needs of the family, even though you're in the family, but we don't acknowledge you as a member of the family for your own safety because you're a bastard because you're supposed to be this, this that, and the third. But but we're going to renege on those agreements and you have to do this that we want you to do and you have to do this and you have to go here and you have to save this person. And I'm just like, listen, I'm ready to climb into the book and beat all these people up and just I want to shake Fitz because when he's thinking about it, like they manipulate him into all these things. He's like, can I have this one thing for myself? And the one thing that he asked for himself has been the same one thing that he, he was asking for in Assassin's Quest and they, they let him have it. But now they're like, no, you can't. We need it. It's more important that this is this is a thing for this person than it is that this other thing happens and is left alone. I obviously can't say too much because it is a sequel to a sequel to a sequel. And I don't want to spoil it for you, but I think if you've read it, if you if you at least have read the Fire Seer trilogy, I think that you can understand some of the things that are bothering me and some of the things that Fitz is constantly having to do away with. And like Fitz, his his whole life is almost defined by loss and he loses so much. And he sacrifices so much and he asks for absolutely nothing like it had to be like to even account for it Fitz was living on his own and he had a little farm or whatever he was living a life he had a little foster son and they come calling and he doesn't even have two pennies to roll together it, it's not until this book which is m months into him being there they're like oh we should probably get you a salary and give you some money of your own so that you don't have to ask somebody to, for extra money to buy a blanket what the disrespect everybody want him to do something everybody pulling him every which way and they just don't have the common respect for this man and then when he gets angry or he reacts and just like acting like it's the end of the world and it's like you don't he don't owe you nothing he owed you absolutely nothing he didn't owe you anything from begin with he was a child that was manipulated and used in a variety of cruel and unusual ways and he went along with it because of out of duty and loyalty but he served his king he he sacrificed for for his king if that time has passed he doesn't owe y'all anything else not that he owed you anything then and it's like damn when is well enough enough when can you leave well enough alone so part of my lack of updates is really just because i've been in the bed in the whole reading this book but also i'm just like so frustrated with the situation surrounding face i just want happiness for him i want something better for him and i know that he's not gonna get that I know that anything that can be taken from him will. And it hurts. It upsets me. Fitz is like the character I feel most like intertwined with because I've watched him grow up. I've I've watched him just struggle. I've watched so many things happen to him. I feel like I've, you know, been courtside to the events of his life. And that is also truly a testament to Robin Hobbs' writing and her character development that I feel so connected and I feel so strongly for Fitz. Uh, so I've been talking to Becca because, you know, she's read the entire series for the most part. And I've been sharing my thoughts with her and she's like, she feels like this is the weakest of the Fitz series because also because of all the events that are happening in here. It, it like, even though this is single POV from Fitz's POV, it feels like he's a side character in his own life. And Hat. He could choke. I'm tired of him already. But that's my update for right now. I have two hundred and fifty ish pages to go. So I'll probably update you all about this when I'm done. Um for pattern and text, I have chosen violet made of thorns. I feel like the flower branch thing. This this feels like pattern and text to me. Um, this is also a 2022 release, so if I decided it could work for that other prompt as well. Not doubling up, but if it wasn't for the one, it could be for the other. And who knows, maybe I'll read this and after I finish this, or maybe I'll go straight from The Golden Fool into Full Fate. To be determined. But that's all I have right now. I am hungry. I'm going to go eat lunch and try and clean because my place looks a mess before I do some Patreon sprints tonight. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hello, friends. Happy Thursday. Today is actually supposed to be like the last day of this vlog, but I don't know if it will be. I haven't decided yet, but I do have an update. I look very crusty, but honestly, it's all I got right now. So, you know, we just have to deal with it together. 
Um, so last night I finished The Golden Fool and I ended up giving it three stars. I gave it three stars because to be quite honest, nothing happens. Uh, I do think there is a significant amount of I don't know if I would say character development, but progression in relationships between characters. Um, some reveals have happened about who is who and how these people are related to one another and what their, the, the depth of relationships. And we've seen some relationships be tested, but like plot wise, this is definitely a setup book. And it's interesting because in the Farsight trilogy, the second book was my favorite book in the trilogy. And while it, it, it set up some things in that, that final book, so much happened and there was so much growth in the second book. In Match, in the Live Trip Trader trilogy, the second book was my least favorite, but also there was so much happened. Like there were so many additions to the world building and the lore. Like that really was like the, the thing that was really happening. Yes, it was setting up things, but like the world was, was built up so much. And in here, I feel like we really were just having a cozy days on, in the castle, you know, trying to build this coterie, trying to uh, make characters be who they want them to be. And like I already did, I went like on a, the last, you know, clip, I just like talked in depth about my thoughts on Fool's Aaron and this and how I don't like how Fix is being treated. And so this one, we, we we're, this really, we see towards the end uh more of the exploration of how the witted and the old blood people and all those things are like at the forefront of the political situation we also see the crossovers quite heavily between this and live ship and there are also some errors in here that like with relationships that i thought i'm like y'all didn't catch it in editing and it's because they it's written like malta and althea are sisters rather than aunt and niece uh, so that was interesting, but seeing, you know, this confirmed the timeline of the events for me. Uh, but overall, this was fine. I enjoy being, I enjoy Robin Hobbs writing. I enjoy being around Fitz and the Fool and these various characters. Some of these characters I think can choke and they can die. At this point, I am almost anti farseer rule. Like, I don't care about them and what they have going on, especially now if it comes at the expense of Fitz's health and well-being uh but that happened and we also saw a little bit of like history repeating itself with hap and the things that go on and it, it was mentioned like how these things are cyclical and how this person raised this person and this person raised this person and now this person is responsible for this person and how that like cycle like continues to be apparent but overall this is fine um next uh, let's talk about oh let's talk about a prelude to ashes so i read like another 40 pages of this last night and i do not like this uh so this is my bookopoly book for dice roll roulette which was to pick a book um to roll the die and the book was between 124 and 175 pages something like that uh and so this is 144 pages and i'm like like, like around halfway through i think and i just do not like the writing style of this like i read i was doing sprints last night and i read out some of the writing and people are like it reads like fan fiction like the i don't like the writing style and like i also don't like that it's very dialogue heavy like so much of what is going on maybe it's me maybe because like when i read epic fantasy and also i'm on the reading this on the heels of robin hive i want a sprawling narrative i want to really be able to see and visualize and, and like root myself in the political situation in the landscape and i want to really be immersed in what's going on and yes it's a novella but i have seen that done in novellas before it is possible and like just the way it's written it's just I just don't like it <laughs> i don't like the writing style and i look on goodreads and it has like a 4.3 like all the ratings are really high granted it doesn't have you know so many ratings this is an indie novel and well an indie book and it's a prequel novella to an already indie, established indie book but like all the ratings are just so good and it's like so not only do i not care about these characters i don't think these characters are very flat very two-dimensional and 2d honestly might be in a, a bit of a 
exaggeration i don't think that it's particularly well written so i don't like the writing style i don't think the character development is very strong like these are just like insert character to to uh for further the narrative and then there's this romance that's driving the events in here and it's just so unbelievable like the, i feel not one s single spark of chemistry between these two characters and the 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 things that are happening around them is just so ridiculous like i honestly want to be an ethic and at this point i pretty much decided that i probably won't be reading a touch of light and the crazy thing is is blurb says abdallah can write he can write well by mark lawrence and i'm like the writing in here is garbage that's harsh but i really don't like it and i'm gonna try to finish this i'm gonna try and lose for another chapter but like I, my desire to read this is so little I, i'm really not having a good time um so yeah and then with reading i was thinking about like ending this vlog here but then i'm like i've, all, I've talked about two books in a trilogy in this vlog and the likelihood of me reading the third book in the trilogy is very high so i'm like i could just go ahead and read the third book and keep that contained in here maybe that'll take me through the weekend um so for prompts you know this is already this was the dice roll roulette prompt golden fool um didn't fit any prompt i just read that and Rope fools aaron was the random emoji generator so i did say for pattern and text that i was gonna try and read violet made of thorns so i'm gonna i like have the audiobook out for this one i don't know if i like it more reading it physically so i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try and read like the first chapter or two physically and see if I prefer that reading experience or prefer reading audibly. And then I'm also maybe gonna start a little bit of Full Fate. Uh, Full Fate is a little bit longer. I think it's like 800-ish pages. Um, but that's all I have right now. I wanna go, I don't know if it happened today, but I wanna go out into the world. I wanna, um, I did obviously go out on Tuesday for my birthday and I ran a couple errands, but uh it's dangerous for me to be at home alone with my thoughts too long because you know depression but i need to like see some sunshine and all that stuff so i may um run an errand or two and i want to get like it's officially pumpkin spice latte season even though fall doesn't start until the 22nd uh, i do want to get a psl so maybe i'll do that today unlikely but possible but yeah this is this update i'm gonna go do the reading i said i was gonna do and i'll check in with you all later okay so i'm not here to do a reading update really even though i have read the first 70 pages of fool's fate but after an eternity of waiting the fairy edition of babel is finally here I, sadly i was spoiled a little bit you know because everybody doesn't have a lot of courtesy but it's here Arcane History. like this black is so deep it's almost like a smoky gray and like the tower on the spine i really like this like silver and gold colorway look at the spine oh that is gorgeous look at the end papers Let's see what the naked hardback looks like. This is what the like aluminum casing looks like, the like slip case. I definitely see myself 
I'm reading this soon. Let's see how it's bound. Oh. Yeah, the tight spine that the UK books love. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. I'm actually happy that I got the Fairy Loot. Granted, I had the subscription, but I like this more than the Illumicrate one because it looks special. It looks different. Like the Illumicrate one, um, like the slipcase within the naked hardcover, it just has like the tower. I like this like lighter colorway quite a bit and like the gilded the foil mm, I'm into it and because this is a sandal I don't have to worry about getting a matching edition mm, okay I'm gonna read some more before I give you an update so talk to you later hello friends oh Hello friends, happy Friday. I did want to give you a reading update. So I haven't read any more of Prelude to Ashes and I think I'm just gonna leave it there because I just don't wanna read it. And I could have easily finished it by now. But I think that one is just gonna be a DNF. Um, I did read a little bit of Violet Made of Thorns this morning. I'm 40 pages in and so far we are a single POV but I'm hoping that at some point the print gets a POV. Um, but so far we've only following Violet who is the seer to this nation and there are only like eight or nine seers in this entire world. Uh, and each one of them is in the employ of like, one monarch or another. And she was coerced into seeing uh, and predicting that the, the prince would find his true love or whatever on this journey that he took. Because when the previous seer died, she said that the prince would bring about the ruination. Well, his him and then his bride would bring about the ruination of the land. There would be blood, roses, and like destruction or something like that. And part of this like fairy forest has started burning. And when they went to investigate, there were rosebuds blooming. And so people are anxious because there also isn't another heir. He isn't married. People are like, by this point, he should have already done so. But he, the prince, and his father is a allowing him essentially to have a love match so I'm wondering if the romance is going to be between the prince and the seer because they also seem to have like a lot of animosity towards one another because the seer saved his life but he doesn't hold her in high regard beyond that <laughs> excuse me um so that's really all I have to say about that one and then I am 300 pages into full fate and you know, I can't say that I'm enjoying it. And I'm having a, a, I've had like a revelation as to why as a whole I'm not really enjoying the Tawny Man trilogy. And that is because while Fitz is the main character of the series, he is essentially a side character in his own life. Um, and that was really illuminated for me in this discussion between Fitz, the Fool, and Chade. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna know. I'm going to find the quote specifically because I was reading on my Kindle. Uh... So there's this argument happening between Che and the Fool. And it's essentially almost about Fitz's loyalty. Because there's going to come a decision that has to be made where Fitz is going to have to make it do something and it's either going to be in the best interest of what the fool has counseled him on or it's going to be in the best interest of Chade and the farseer line okay and after this conversation Fitz says to him how can the two of you quarrel over my loyalty as if I had no thought of my own to give to any decision I might make I would not think a horse or a dog as mindless a game piece as you both seem to think that I am and Chade says to him, not a horse or a dog, Fitz, no. I'd never think of you that way, no. You're a sword, so you were made to be, by me, a weapon to be wielded, and he thinks that you fit his hand the best. What? The disrespect? No, you're not even a living thing. You're an object, an object to be used, and that is how 
Ketchikan and Dutiful and Che and all of them. That's how they see him. And it makes me so angry because, I mean, every time a decision comes up about what's in the best interest of all these other people, Fitz's best interest is always, like, left by the wayside. And in this entire series, he's asked for one thing. He asked for one thing at the end of Assassin's Quest, and he's continuing to ask for this thing now, and even that has been taken from him. And he's constantly being brought to task, and it's just like, if he said to hell with y'all, y'all would be worse off because y'all need him. And it's like, you don't treat him like a valued member of the family. You don't treat him like a even a valued counselor. You treat him, again, like a tool to be used. And in Farseer, he was treated poorly, Okay, I won't d d deny that he was treated poorly, but the things that he was doing were because some of it was he wanted to. He was being led to do these things, but he had his own life. He had his own investments. And in this one, he's lost everything. He's lost his partner. He's lost uh, his freedom. He's lost like the ability to live out his life on his own and by his own terms. He can't even have his own like bed to sleep in. Like he's constantly everything that could possibly belong to him like there's a scene where he like sits out his belongings and he's like there's very little of anything that belongs to me anything that is mine and i'm just like y'all don't appreciate him and i'm like if you have read the farseer trilogy even if you haven't read tawny man you know that fitz has sacrificed so much he sacrificed so much he's given so much of himself of his life of his health of his well-being and he doesn't ask for anything all he he, 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 he's, he's literally giving his life. He's giving everything you could possibly take from somebody. He's giving it gladly. And all he asked was to be left alone. And of course, when it's more beneficial to you that he run into your errands, you pull him back. And I'm just, it, it's just hard to enjoy because I'm so frustrated. And I know that, like I said before, this is a testament to Robin Hobbs. Like, amazing character work that I feel so invested in Fitz. I feel so protective of him. And that the characters and the situations around him can bring me so much anger. But I, I'm still not enjoying it because I'm just like, Fitz is like, this, is, this thing is mine. I don't owe it to you. I don't owe it to anyone else. And it's like, well, it would benefit us to have it. So we're going to take it from you. He's just like, okay. And I feel defeated. He feels defeated. And it's like, there's no respite for him. No. And it's frustrating to me. Like, even the one thing that he took solace in, he doesn't have anymore. The Every, every time he finds some comfort in life, it is taken from him. And I'm just... Me and, me and Robin Hobb, we got to fight. That's really what it come down to. We got to fight. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm at. So, that's this update. I'm going to read some more. And I'll talk to you when I have more updates. Hello friends, long time no talk. So it's actually November when I'm filming this like outro to this vlog. Um, since like the last day of that vlog that I filmed when I was starting to pack, life has just been kicking my ass, dragging me through the gutter. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong and more. I actually have the flu right now when I'm giving you this update, but 
uh, like I took a month off posting I moved and that was a very traumatic experience I started a new job um, I've been harassed I've been assaulted I um, am actually in the process of changing jobs because it's one of the things that are going on with said job um, my health has not been in the greatest of places my mental health is not been great I, I have actually been sick for like the last for five out of the last six weeks um life has just been challenging but i i'm trying to get back in the swing of things and so in this vlog this is is just gonna serve as the september reading vlog and the little bit of bookopoly that i was able to film so i did marathon the tawny man trilogy overall um i think i gave fool's fate four stars i think overall it's like a 3.5 star series for me and it's I, and since then i have also read the uh rain Rock chronicles so the rain Rock chronicles is definitely my least favorite series in the realm of the other Lings, but this one but the tawny man is definitely my least favorite fitz series um granted i haven't read the final fitz series yet but i assume i'm gonna like it more than that um but yeah so i was able to marathon that trilogy i read violet made of thorns which i ended up giving like three stars it was fine i unhauled the book won't be continuing on with the series if it is a series and i do think it is um but overall i hope you enjoy what you know the chaos that is in this vlog it also covers my birthday which is a very rough time for me lots of tears lots of just everything um if you're one of my patrons you kind of know <coughs> excuse me in detail like what's been going on with me um so you know that this is very challenging to try and get back in the saddle but I'm, I'm working on it so i hope you enjoyed the vlog if you made it to the end of the vlog let's leave let's leave a wolf emoji let's leave a wolf emoji if you know you know and i will see you hopefully in a video to come I'm not back on a posting schedule yet. I am just trying to post what I can when I can. Because, again, like I said, right now I have the flu. So, I'm not doing great. But, um, I do miss making content. And I want to ease back into it. Because it's something that I enjoy doing. And hopefully, this break will mean that I can go back to enjoying doing it. So, I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye.